Time for jazz. Yo estate kivanok. This is Willis Conover speaking. What is your name, please? My name is Willis Conover. My name is Willis Conover. My name is Willis Conover. Will you follow along once again with your copies of this affidavit panel? I, Willis Conover, am a familiar name and a familiar voice to radio listeners around the world from Sweden to Ceylon. For an hour and a half a day, six days a week, 52 weeks a year, I broadcast a radio program which can be heard in every country in the world. My audience is the largest of any international broadcast and has been estimated at some 30 million people. The program is called Music USA and appeals mainly to the universal appetite for good jazz. Most of the music I play comes from my own personal collection of some 60,000 records. People in this country can hear the show only if they have a shortwave radio, since the program is beamed overseas by the U.S. Information Agency's famous Voice of America. This is the Voice of America Jazz Hour. With his deep baritone voice, Willis Conover brought jazz into the homes of listeners around the world, inspiring the next generation of stars. His daily hour-long jazz broadcast on The Voice of America was especially meaningful for those who tuned in from behind the Iron Curtain. Conover's Jazz Hour was, for many, the only exposure to music from the West. Alexei Kozlov is the founder of the popular Russian jazz ensemble Arsenal. As a university architecture student, he says, he was led by Conover into the world of jazz inspiring him to learn to play the saxophone. Despite the forbiddance of Voice of America programming in Soviet countries, we still listened to Voice of America putting ourselves and our families in real danger. We learned everything from Canover. While there was propaganda against everything American, Canover was the one who made America to be appealing and desirable for everyone who listened. Canover's Jazz Hour provided a platform for household names in the West like Duke Ellington, Charlie Parker, and Count Basie, to be introduced to East European audiences. But for fledgling musicians, his show also provided an education in the art of jazz, helping them make the transition from passive listeners to active participants in the music. Viktor Foneriov from Latvia is now a professional bass player in the United States. He was introduced to Conover's program while attending Aviation College in Riga. Every evening I tried to sneak into the only classroom that had a radio player. Everyone at home was asleep, so they didn't know I was gone. Otherwise I would have been grounded for listening to the prohibited programming. From 1955 until his death in 1996, Conover worked from his small studio in Washington. From here, under clouds of cigarette smoke, he projected his love of jazz to the world. And that's the news on VOA to the Americas. I'm Kay Gallant in Washington. It's now 10.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Willis Conover is next with jazz. Time for jazz. Willis Conover in Washington, D.C. with the Voice of America Jazz Hour. On the night of... December 7, 1956, Lester Young performed at Olivia Davis's Patio Lounge in Washington, D.C. The pianist, Bill Potts, the bassist, Norman Williams, the drummer, Jim Lutt, a Washington, D.C. rhythm section for Lester Young. With Young's permission, Bill Potts recorded the performances of that evening. Volume 1 has been released and broadcast. Tonight, selections from Volume 2 and Volume 3. Lester Young in Washington, D.C., 1956. So, 
always been asked, how did you learn to play jazz music the way you did? And of course, I always tell the same story that I heard Clifford Brown on the program led by, of course, Willis Canover. <laughs> And if not for that program, I would have been like a totally different person and many, many millions of people around the world. And that tune I heard for the first in my life as jazz music, I would like to play for you right now. But I remember Willis Conover. We toured together in Europe and people that spoke English sounded like him. <laughs> because that's the only way they'd heard English and they copied his voice but um, it was such a great thing that um, Voice of America was going all over the world and doing so much for democracy and to get the European perspective on Willis and his effect here is Czechoslovakian born keyboardist Jan Hammer I owe endless debt of gratitude to, to Voice of America, and, it's, and specifically Willis Conover, who was a really good friend to us. And uh, he came and he, he was a, you know, he became a patron. I remember when I first heard, I mean, I, when I was growing up, I would listen to uh, Jazz Hour, you know, we would be taping it and swapping tapes and all that. It was, but when I first heard myself on his program playing, you know, our record, he played our record. I was, I thought I was going to die. It was just, it was unbelievable. Anyway, and I think that uh, the Voice of America really made the whole giant uh, jazz and modern music awakening in Europe, in Eastern Europe, I mean. You know, because there was Iron Curtain and it was real. No, he was phenomenal. His voice was like uh, one in a million. It was unbelievable. That was the only way we we had for to, to really hear some jazz music. You know, because um, you should know that in Cuba they call it jazz music, the music of the imperialists. You know, Willis Canover on the Voices of America was the only way we got to hear jazz and to 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 know where where we're going on. You know, in the jazz fields all over the world, because he always uh, um, promote every kind of things that was going on in the jazz music, you know, and, and we were aware, probably more than now that I live in the U.S., I knew then, back then, more because uh, he informed. So as we spoke about uh, listening to Willis Canover on radio, there was a very important source of information because I couldn't get LPs into shops around 1960, 1959, when I was 11. So I was listening very much to the radio. I was trying to transcribe down the melodies. And for us, Voice of Voice of America was Willis Canover. That, that was it. For me, it was like a symbol of, uh, of a freedom, jazz, because I was a young boy who was introduced to jazz by my father's student, Jiří Pravda, Jiří George Pravda. And he told me, look, Emil, you must listen to Willis Canover, Voice of America. This is how I get to it. To jazz is the freedom of expression. Jazz is very, very free music. And that's what Willis Canover was representing. We, we should thank this uh, wonderful, amazing man for bringing that music, for staying with us, not, not leaving us uh, with uh, emptiness, with music that maybe could be different. I mean, he, the, the range of the music was from Arthur Blythe to Chicago Ensemble, Art Ensemble of Chicago, but also we heard a lot of Louis Armstrong and Ella Fitzgerald and Charlie Parker and the albums by Herbie Hancock, Chick Corea, uh, McLaughlin, and all, 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 the, all the specter of music. And uh, now we tell the story about him, how important was not the propaganda, of anything but the beautiful music, uh, the spirit, and the heart. So thank you, Mr. Willis Connery, for all this year of, of providing us with great music. So thank you very much. Well, Duke, would you trust my taste to select r records by I you? I certainly would, uh, because uh, that's what they told me in the Soviet Union. They said, you know, uh, you know, your friend Willis Connery is uh, 
He really plays your best things. You know, and I said, well, I was very happy to hear it. And they have them there, you know. And uh, they were, because of you, they were very good to me. I have no comment because uh, I could only try to top you in graciousness, and that is a, a fruitless endeavor. Well, so I'm just, I'm just a little honest boy, that's all. So, sweet kid, you know, but honest. All right, Duke, let's play some records, and uh, then we'll come back. That's for me, okay, baby. That's awfully gracious of you, and as usual, you are the gracious host, and uh, it's been a complete joy being here with you, and of course, it's been instructive as well. And uh, as we say good evening or good morning or whatever time this is, why, please tell all of your lovely listeners that we do love them madly. And a happy birthday to Duke Ellington, today, April 29, 1974. This is Willis Conover with part one of Music USA. Conover's attention to detail and his knack for explaining jazz to the masses may never be replicated. But in an interview near the end of his career, he seemed to feel he had accomplished his own individual goals. What I want to do is something that makes me feel that my life was worthwhile. And I think I will feel that way on my last day. <laughs> 